Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is a presentation by the North Carolina DEQ Division of Water Infrastructure. Our division provides grants and low interest loans for water, wastewater, and soon uh, stormwater infrastructure projects. I'm grateful to be joined by my colleagues from the division and partners from resource agencies. My name is Shadi Eskaf, and I'm the division director. We're excited to be announcing the plans for administering the State Fiscal Recovery Fund of the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, that has been appropriated to the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality and our Division of Water Infrastructure. There will be a significant increase in grant funding available for water, wastewater, stormwater projects, which we will explain. This represents new funding opportunities that we are excited to share with you. We are recording this webinar and will be posting it on the division's website so that others may view it. Please feel free to share it with your colleagues. To start us off, we are honored to have North Carolina DEQ Secretary Elizabeth Beiser to say a few words. Madam Secretary, if you're ready, um, thank you for joining us and please go ahead. Thank you, Shadi, and I am very happy to help kick off this webinar. <clears throat> this is such an exciting time. We have access to a historic level of infrastructure funding. From the American Rescue Plan alone, DEQ is able to award $1.6 billion in water, sewer, and stormwater grants. It's incredible and it's sorely needed throughout our state. Reliable water and wastewater service is crucial for public health and it's critical for economic development. Communities need that infrastructure in place in order to attract business and industry and to help their economies grow. This money will go a long way, especially in our rural areas that are dealing with the impacts of devastating storms or struggling to keep their systems viable after losing longstanding industries. In 2017, the State Water Infrastructure Authority released a statewide master plan to help chart a path towards viability for North Carolina's aging water and wastewater systems. It was a collect collaborative effort, and together we created a framework to deal with the challenges facing utilities in our state so that they can function as long-term self-sufficient enterprises that are able to provide reliable water services now and in the future. The influx of funding from the American Rescue Plan can help jumpstart projects, but long-term viability is critical to the success of the utilities and of our communities across North Carolina. This is a transformative amount of money. It's more than we've ever had access to at one time, and it's going to allow us to fund more projects than we ever have before. As we do that, this is also our opportunity to identify and address longstanding inequities. We have to make sure that communities that haven't had fun access to funding in the past uh, or ha haven't had access to their water and wastewater services in the past or have been historically bypassed can take advantage of this funding. DEQ is committed to making sure that we view this funding through the lens of equity and help those who need it the most. One way we're doing that is by creating a funding opportunity that doesn't just include at-risk utilities, but also covers projects for at-risk communities. There are communities in North Carolina that aren't connected to their town's water and sewer services. Studies have shown that people that are connected to public water typically have better health, health outcomes. If underserved or disadvantaged communities want to be connected, we provided an option that allows utilities to fund the project and cover the connection fees that may have been out of reach for residents in the past. To increase awareness of this opportunity, I've asked our team to do community outreach to help locate the communities where this funding could be put to good use. And we've reached out to our partners across state government, community organizations, and local health departments. We'll be sharing the results of that outreach with the appropriate utilities to help put that money to work. Now, everything I've talked about so far is, is what's available during the spring application round. But I do want to take a few minutes to preview what still hasn't been finalized and what's coming down the pipeline next. First, there is a brand new dedicated funding program for stormwater projects. The General Assembly allocated $100 million from ARPA to help improve stormwater systems, both for water quality and water quantity. This is going to help cities and towns become more resilient to flooding and better manage runoff. We're still working out the details of this program, so please stay tuned. 
Second, we anticipate another significant investment in water infrastructure from the bipartisan infrastructure law that Congress passed a few months ago. Not only will this greatly increase North Carolina's allocation of federal money, but there are also dedicated funds available to address PFAS contamination and to replace lead pipes. Our estimate over the next five years is that North Carolina is going to receive an additional $1.1 billion from the federal government. This is an exciting opportunity to make thoughtful, strategic, and equitable investments in our nation, our state's infrastructure. Next, Shadi Eskoff and John Riscard from our Division of Water Infrastructure are going to talk about the ARPA administration plan. But before they do, I want to take a minute to recognize their hard work and the hard work of their team in pulling this together. It's a tremendous amount of work on a short timeline, and they're doing a great job. I also want to take a moment to thank our partners at the North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office, the State Treasurer's Office, the North Carolina League of Municipalities, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, the UNC School of Government, Councils of Government, and the many other organizations that we work with uh, that are working for communities and local governments to address water, wastewater, and stormwater needs. Many have provided feedback on the proposed ARPA administration plan, and that helped us to finalize these plans. So with that, Shadi, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much, Secretary Beiser. Appreciate the, uh, the introduction and, and the kind words, and uh, we are excited to be uh, working with uh, local governments and utilities across the state uh, for, uh, to administer these funds. So thank you so much. Uh, so today we'll give you a brief uh, snapshot of the division's funding programs and spend most of our time explaining how we will administer the American Rescue Plan Act state fiscal recovery funds for water, wastewater, stormwater infrastructure projects, uh, which you heard uh, very succinctly explained by Secretary Beiser. Uh, and we'll explain how to apply for the funding during the spring 2022 funding round. After, we will hear uh, from the North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office and the North Carolina uh, League of Municipalities and the UNC School of Government. Thank you for joining us on this webinar. Before we proceed, I should say that we have a lot to cover in this hour, uh, and it's possible, probably even very likely, that we will not have time to answer questions at the end of this session. However, we are working with resource agency partners to provide additional opportunities specifically to do just that, questions and answers about ARPA funding for water, wastewater, stormwater, and you hear more about that um, toward the end of this webinar. Uh, that will give us more time to address questions after you've had a chance to digest what's in this plan. Uh, we will also post those opportunities on our website and share them through listservs and press releases. Any questions about those opportunities, please contact our PIO, Kathy Aykroyd, and see her contact information on this screen. Uh, we're also working on developing a frequently asked questions document that we will be posting on our website in the coming days which will be a working document uh, as we receive more questions and provide more answers about administering ARPA funding. So please, for now, please do use the chat function or the Q&A function in WebEx to submit your questions. Even if we don't have time to answer the questions in this session, we want your questions now so we can read through them and put them in our FAQ document and be able to address them going forward. Also, if you'd like for us to respond, to follow up with a particular question they are asking today, uh, if you don't mind, please provide your email address uh, alongside your question and we will follow up. Or you could email the appropriate person that you see listed here with your question um, after this webinar. We have a lot of staff here who uh, know a lot of the details about funding for water and wastewater, um, and we're working on the stormwater side, so feel free to contact the uh, appropriate uh, supervisor you see listed here directly. I will be posting the slide again towards the end of this webinar. All of our resources, application materials, guidance documents, and training uh, workshop announcements are on our website. The easy way to find us is to go to DEQ nc.gov and click on divisions in the top banner and then click on water infrastructure. If you're already familiar, familiar with the division, that's great. We'll, you'll hear a lot of familiar terms. If you're not familiar with the division, I need to provide you with a very brief uh, description of our division of funding practices because it's relevant to how we will be administering the ARPA funds. 
Our division administers most of the water and wastewater infrastructure uh, funding programs managed by the state, and that includes funding that comes from state appropriations. So for the viable utilities reserve and the state reserve programs, um, we have some recurring funds that we administer for grants and loans uh, in those different reserves. We also administer the EPA's Drinking Water State Revolving Fund and the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, uh, which provides low interest loans and additional subsidies, and the Community Development Block Grants for Infrastructure. Now, the ARPA funds are all going to be going through the first bullet that you see there, the state appropriation. So it will be administered through the different reserves um, that we have in place. Our division takes applications for funding twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. Uh, the spring ones are usually towards the end. Of the date, deadline date is usually the end of April, and the fall is the end of September. Uh, we'll explain the timelines and, and communicate the timelines um, in, in these slides as well. Funding applications are scored based on established priority rating systems that have been approved by the State Water Infrastructure Authority. Uh, those rating systems are on our website, and we highly encourage you to go through, we actually require you to go through the, the rating system as you're applying uh, because it directs you on how to provide application that addresses those, those questions so that we can assess the applications and score your application against all other applications that we receive. Funding decisions are made by SWEA, the State Water Infrastructure Authority. And in some cases, for funds that come out of the Viability Utilities Reserve, they also require local government commission's approval. SWEA was formed in 2014, and you can see that um, during those years up through February of last year, funding has been awarded all over the state. Uh, it's a high priority for the authority and for the department to make sure that the loans and funds, the grants and, and loans that we have are available to all communities, including the smallest communities uh, across the state. Um, so we work hard to, to try to ensure that, and some of the decisions on how the funds are administered, um, are, are, uh, that goes into a uh, factor of, of how we administer those funds. The types of funding that we have available are drinking uh, funds for drinking water infrastructure projects, wastewater infrastructure projects, and uh, clean water save revolve fund green projects, which includes uh, several different types of projects, uh, storm water projects, reclaim water, uh, stream restoration, energy efficiency, all of those are different types of projects that we administer within the wastewater umbrella. And we, we will be working on a separate storm water funding program uh, outside of that, uh, that sphere. We also have study grants. Uh, so those were all construction projects uh, that I just described, and we also have study grants uh, to help water and wastewater utilities plan ahead uh, for what might be coming down, uh, down the line. Uh, so those two study grants are the Asset Inventory and Assessment Grants and Merger Regionalization Feasibility Grants. You'll hear us call them AIAs and MRFs, just for abbreviation. Uh, the AIA grant is to help utilities uh, identify all their assets and assess their condition and plan for future replacement and rehabilitation of those assets. MRFs are opportunities for utilities to consider possibilities of uh, interconnections and, and um, partnerships with other utilities in order to reduce long-term costs uh, for that utility. So we'll go into the uh, ARPA administration plan. And I want to emphasize this is the American Rescue Plan Act State Fiscal Recovery Fund Administration Plan, not the local fiscal recovery fund. Uh, so as local governments here know, you've, you've received your local fiscal recovery funds either from North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office or from the U.S. Treasury. This presentation is not about those funds. Uh, you can hear more about those from the resource agencies at the end of this presentation. The state received funds directly from U.S. Treasury to administer, uh, and it provides another opportunity for local governments to apply for and to use additional uh, grants that are available through our, our programs uh, for water and wastewater and stormwater infrastructure. So that's what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the State Fiscal Recovery Fund. All the information that we're going to be talking about is on our website, uh, so please feel free to, to look over there. And um, the, one of the documents I think will be very helpful is that we posted the uh, ARPA administration plan uh, this week um, on Monday. Uh, on our website. This is a, a revised version. It's only an eight-page document, so we recommend everybody to uh, take a look at it. We'll be describing the, the key parts of it um, right now, uh, but feel free to, to take a look at it. Uh, we had posted a proposed version 
uh, back in December, went through a public review period. Uh, this new version that we posted this week uh, is the updated and the final version uh, that reflects a few changes from what we had proposed in December following the public comments that we received. Uh, so if, you, if you're familiar with what you, what you saw in December, recommend that you download the new version and familiar, familiarize yourself with the new version because of these uh, changes. And with that, I'm going to pass uh, the presentation over to my colleague, John Risgard, who's going to go through our ARPA administration plan. John? All right. Thank you, Shadi. Um, so a lot to talk about. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining in on the first of many opportunities to learn more about uh, these funds. Um, we going over each of the different uh, funding buckets, as, we'll, as I'll refer to them, and who would be eligible for those and what types of projects are going to be eligible uh, for those funds. Um, the total appropriations to the department uh, by, through the state fiscal recovery fund is just under $1.7 billion, so uh, obviously a tremendous opportunity um, for all of, our, all of our utilities and potential recipients of the funds. Uh, this is a, a very complicated table. Uh, this is, uh, you can get the same table as part of our administration plan that you can download off of our website. Um, but it shows how the funds were appropriated, into which reserves the funds flow, and then what was the intended use of those funds in those different reserves. Um, as Shadi mentioned previously, there are funds going to the viable utility reserve uh, aimed to help support our communities that have been designated as distressed. Um, there are three different appropriations to the state reserve for water and wastewater projects. Um, there is a, a, a bucket of funds for communities um, that will be classified as at risk. There are, and then there's additional funding for everybody else that was not, were not classified as at risk or designated as distressed. There's a third pot within the drinking water reserve uh, specifically for study grants, the AIAs and MRFs that Shani mentioned previously, as well as some opportunities for training and or planning grants uh, for pre-construction activities, um, potentially help communities get some funds to do the engineering work earlier in the process instead of uh, after the, the design and plans and specs have been approved. And then the, uh, a new fund, Local Assistance for Stormwater Infrastructure Fund, was created as part of the appropriations in the, in the budget to create a new project, a new program to support stormwater, stormwater utilities. Uh, okay, next slide. There were some directly appropriated projects within the budget. Uh, as part of Session Law 2021-180, uh, there's a listing of different direct appropriations from the different uh, buckets of funds, different reserves. Uh, a total of 126 recipients received just approximately $840 million of the $1.7 billion that was appropriated to the Department for Administration. Um, the division has already contacted all of those recipients. Um, if you are a recipient of direct appropriations and aren't aware of our contact or attempts to contact you, um, please use that contact information Shadi provided earlier, get in touch with, it, with us, and um, we'll uh, get that process going. Uh, also recommend that you, you may want to talk to utility director or some, uh, maybe somebody else within your organization that we've already reached out to. So we are collecting information on those projects um, and to try to get them moving as quickly as, as we can and as quickly as you're able to move on those projects. Um, just generally how our process works, we work on a reimbursement basis uh, by statute. Um, the funds are provided once cost is occurred. Um, so uh, we're not able just to send you a check or send you the money and then you do the project. Um, we've, we've got some steps already established. Um, we want to establish and verify that the project that you want to do are indeed eligible for the American Rescue Plan Act funds uh, and eligible based on which, uh, which reserve those funds are flowing through. We'll assign a project manager so you have a point of contact with a division. Um, and then set up a, a, a time frame so that there's some project benchmarks have been established to make sure the funds can flow efficiently. Uh, we're looking at potential dates of when, when a design would be submitted, when the project would be ready to go out for bid, and finally when the 
project is ready for contracting to begin construction. Uh, so after the uh, directly appropriated funds, uh, there is still uh, 700, approximately $758 million to be awarded as part of a competitive process, potentially uh, through the competitive application process. Um, these are funds in addition to our normal funds that we have available. So we, we, there are uh, significant amounts of uh, state revolving funds uh, available for loan principal forgiveness. Um, as well as the appropriated state reserve uh, funds, approximately $10 million a year, and up through our CDBGI program. Uh, one thing to note, um, all of the American Rescue Plan Act funds must be expended by December 2026, so we have a very short time frame uh, considering the time that it often takes for some of these larger capital construction projects to go from an award through design, bid, and um, construction. Again, funds would be provided in a reimbursement basis, so you have to accrue those costs before the funds can flow. Also, any project must be eligible to comply with federal and state requirements. So there's, there's a few ARPA requirements, uh, and then there's also a few requirements that uh, are established statutorily, again, depending on what, what pot of money they're in. I'll go through some of that in future slides. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of the um, different buckets. Um, the first one to talk about are the funds that are going to be available through the Viable Utility Reserve. Um, these are funds for distressed communities. Uh, it's approximately $353 million will be available. All right, these funds are limited to local government units that have been designated by both the State Water Infrastructure Authority and the Local Government Commission as distressed. Currently, there are 95 local government units that have received this designation and we're working through some statutory requirements and a, and a process um, established a couple years ago with our new viable utility program. The evaluations uh, are an ongoing basis. There will be another reassessment in April of 2022 um, where the distress criteria will be evaluated and, and potentially additional communities would be recommended for designation by State Water Infrastructure Authority and Local Government Commission. So while there's 35 that we know of now, there is a possibility of some additional communities receiving that designation and being eligible for these funds. Um, viable Utility Reserve is, is limited uh, to certain project types, rehab and replacement, regionalization, decentralization, studies, and then other projects demonstrating a long-term viability. That's really going to be up to the applicant to demonstrate that that project is going to support long-term viability. Um, if, you, if you have a project um, that does not fit under those first four, please engage early with our staff to make sure that the project that you would like to do will be eligible for funds uh, and does not get kicked out of the application process as it being ineligible. So again, please do some forethought and some communicating to, to make sure your projects will be eligible. There's a $15 million limit of funding per local government unit or recipient um, established by statute. Uh, there's also, uh, or $30 million if it's to fund a regionalization project. Um, and that's all of the funds awarded through the Viable Utility Reserve. Um, so it really it, it could be a study grant, it could be a construction project, uh, it could be a, a number of different types of projects, but it's a total cap of $15 million per recipient or 30 for regionalization. Again, just keep in mind that SRF loans will be available to fully fund projects um, or supplement funding if you are, if your distressed community um, and are interested in taking on loan as part of your project costs in excess of $15 million, okay? Uh, so the, the anticipated plan is to award the Viable Utility Reserve ARPA funds over the next two rounds, uh, starting in the spring of 2022. Applications will be due May 2nd, uh, the first Monday, uh, 
in, towards the end of April, April 30th, is a typical day. I think that's a Saturday. Um, as Shadi mentioned before, we have an existing priority rating system that we use for the state revolving fund, state reserve construction projects, and viable utility reserve construction projects. The same priority rates, very similar, or same priority rating system as we've used the last uh, three, four application rounds. Uh, it's a single application for all of our construction projects, and then we do our best to award the best available funds. Um, ARPA funds are going to be considered the best available funds because of the limited federal requirements that go with those funds, and we will award those first to the projects with the highest priority. Funding recommendations will consider both the quantity and the quality of the applications that we are received um, in order to keep some of the money, some of the Viable Utility American Rescue Plan Act funds available for a fall round. Eligible projects not funded or partially funded with ARPA funds will be automatically reconsidered in the fall per NC State General Statute. Uh, so we anticipate that approximately 20 to 40 percent of the Viable Utility Reserve ARPA funds will be made available in the fall 2022 round. Again, that could change slightly depending on the number of applications and the quality of the applications received. That's what we anticipate uh, having available in the fall. Fall applications would be due September 30th, 2022. Um, there are, is potential that the priority rating system would again be updated for that round. So there may be some small changes in priority rates. Okay. As part of the Viable Utility Reserve training grants, um, uh, there is a plan to uh, award training grants to all of the distressed communities. Uh, any, dis any community that has been designated distressed has a statutory requirement to have develop an education plan for their local leaders and utility staff. These funds would be uh, awarded in order to support those efforts. This would be up to $2,000 of funds. Um, these funds would be available as in a, using the same reimbursement model that we use for all of our funds. Um, it is a pending approval from the Local Government Commission. Um, however, the State Water Infrastructure Authority has already approved uh, these grants. The funds would be available for two years or until the requirements of General Statute 159G have been met. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, another part of the administration plan is to uh, give distressed communities that already have a pending state revolving fund loan through the division the opportunity to replace the loan portion with Bible Utility Reserve ARPA grants. Um, there is a, a, a ARPA requirement that the, the ARPA funds cannot be used to pay existing debt, um, so projects must not yet be in disbursement to qualify for this potential swapping of funds. The division has identified 22 projects as potentially eligible. Uh, these 22 projects uh, would amount to approximately $48.5 million of SRF loans to be replaced. or uh, just over 10% of the available ARPA funds, keeping in mind that 22 projects, 22 communities represents um, almost 22% of the 90, 96, 95 distressed local government units. Um, it, it seems like a, a reasonable and a good way to uh, get the, the ARPA funds flowing and get those ARPA funds to communities that have are, already have established and approved projects uh, through our division. We're asking that Potential recipients of, these, of the fund swap provide written request uh, to the division and acknowledge that the, the ARPA fund requirements will apply to the project, um, including the spend-by date, December uh, 30, 2026, and any other conditions that go with American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, by the utility reserve funds uh, that are swapped would count towards that $15 million cap that I talked about in an earlier slide. And approval of these, of the swapping of funds, since it is come additional awards from the Viable Utility Reserve, would require approval by both the State Water Infrastructure Authority and the Local Government Commission. This could happen as early as March or April 2022. 
Moving on to funds uh, appropriated to the state reserve for communities that are designated as at risk, the $191.3 million will be available through a competitive application round. Uh, communities that are will be designated as at risk. Um, it, it's, it's this is always a little hard to explain. Um, we're looking at two two different types of, of factors. We're looking at the community itself, and then certain construction projects. So let's first talk about what types of communities um, would be eligible for these at risk funds. Um, using the same criteria as were used to de designate communities as distressed, um, the division created, and with help of the local government commission and the authority, uh, assessment criteria for making that determination and an assessment score. Um, so one of the criteria would be communities that scored six or greater using the distressed criteria and meet three of five local government unit indicator criteria. Um, sounds complicated. Uh, we've actually developed a, uh, a form um, as part of our affordability criteria, affordability calculator worksheet. Uh, if you've used our program before, you've filled that out before, it's been adapted so that when you put in your community name, it's very, very easy and apparent um, whether or not you would meet these criteria and be eligible for whatever funding, whether it's distressed, at risk, or other. Uh, the other category, the other pathway for this designation is the number of residential service connections you have. It's between one and a thousand service connections. And again, you meet three of the five local government unit indicators, uh, you would be eligible for the at-risk funds for, for projects supporting your community. Uh, again, we will be reassessing the distress criteria scores in April of 2022. So there is a possibility that some of the communities who meet who don't meet those criteria now will after April. Um, and, and the other approach we're taking, both for distressed and for the at risk, um, is that if for some reason you are you no longer meet that criteria, uh, you would still be eligible for the at risk funds so as long as you meet those these criteria now. Uh, and include that information in your application, you will be good to go. Uh, there's also considerations for certain types of projects um, to be eligible for at-risk uh, funding, whether or not the, the community who owns that utility and the applicant meet the at-risk criteria or not. Um, so this would be projects um, that with a primary purpose of connecting residents in disadvantaged, underserved communities for water and wastewater services, where that service is not already provided, extending lines and providing services. The, the determination of whether um, the, the project is eligible will be based on the DEQ community mapping system uh, or information area provided in the application. Uh, the application guidance outlines uh, in more detail what, it, what kind of documentation is going to be needed in order to assure that those projects will be eligible for the at-risk funds. Again, this is voluntary connections, uh, and the, uh, the funds can and should include connection and or capacity fee, uh, capacity fees that usually the homeowner has to, has to bear. It can be covered with this grant. Uh, okay, so timing. Spring funding round for 2022 is when we'll, we'll make these funds initially available. Uh, applications due May 2nd, same with everything else. Um, there is a, there will be a $15 million cap per local government unit or $30 million for regionalization, uh, the same cap that we're going to be placing with statutorily to the viable utility reserve. Again, single application will, will allow you to be uh, considered for all of our funds. Uh, all the funds that you're eligible for. Uh, we do not anticipate that all the funds will be awarded in the spring 2022 round. Um, similar, uh, uh, a similar range of fund, percentage of funds we anticipate being, being available in, in the fall. Eligible projects not funded or partially funded will be automatically consider, reconsidered in the fall. And again, SRF loans uh, funding will be uh, are available for communities 
that are interested and willing to take on a loan portion of projects that exceed their $15 million cap within the funding range. Okay. The fall 2022 round, again, we anticipate about 20 to 40 percent of funds of the at state reserve at-risk funds to be available in the fall. Applications due September 30th. Again, we will do initial awards up to that $15 million cap or $30 million for regionalization projects. This would be the, a cap per local government unit. Um, if funds remain available after the initial awards and, and we funded eligible projects, um, we would make available funds in up to $5 million increments in priority order. Uh, the, the $5 million increments would be provided in, uh, in project order and be limited to $5 million, again, per local government unit, not, a, not as a, necessarily a per project basis. So if you have two projects um, that happen to exceed uh, your $15 million cap, we would fund the first one in highest priority order up to $5 million. Um, if, if that can be fully funded and you still have some of that $5 million cap available uh, and have another project, eligible for funding, those that felt additional funds would be awarded to that project. Again, there'll be more more information, uh, I'm sure, in the FAQ on this item uh, to get more details and certainly ask that you uh, ask for more clarification questions here today on that. The $5 million increments will be automatically available, again, to, to partially ARP-funded projects in the spring. Um, that was the, that's the key in their reconsideration step. So your project in the spring will be brought forward to the fall if it was not fully funded with ARPA. Our applicants can submit an updated application if they desire. We actually recommend this. Um, there may be an opportunity to get additional priority points um, based on the review of your spring application, and it's an opportunity then to uh, provide additional documentation and assure you that you get all the priority, priority points for your project in the fall re, uh, reconsideration. And again, SRF loans will be available. Okay. Uh, the next bucket will be is the state reserve for all other systems. Uh, this one's a little bit more straightforward. I hate to say only, but $54.1 million of available funds um, is not, not as much as, as is available to the at-risk and viable utility distressed communities. Uh, State Reserve, uh, this is, these funds are available for construction projects. Um, it's eligible to all, anybody that is not designated as distressed or qualifies for the at-risk funding. Um, and it's a pretty broad uh, eligibility for, for construction projects. It can be anything supporting your water, pretty much anything supporting your water or wastewater utilities. These funds would be made available in the spring round. Um, it's a $5 million cap per local government unit indicator. This is a change from the, uh, the draft plan that went out. Um, the thought is to help spread that $54 million uh, to more communities. Uh, there is a opportunity to get up to $15 million if your project supports regionalization efforts. Uh, if funds remain available uh, in the spring round, we will use a similar method to award up to $5 million increments uh, per local government unit um, or project in priority order until the funds are exhausted. And as, and as always, SRF loans are available uh, if you're willing to take them to fully fund projects or more fully fund projects. Uh, some limits, the ARPA funds um, that were directly appropriated um, will count towards the limits that we talked about, the $15 million or $5 million limits, um, and also will be considered when the $5 million increments are awarded. Um, so if you are a community that have, has been directly appropriated more than $15 million, uh, there is a possibility that you can get additional funding, um, but not until all the projects have been fully funded to that limit. Projects can be 100% ARPA grant funded, uh, regardless of the percentage of grant funding uh, that is part of our affordability criteria. Those of you that have been through our program before know that for the state revolving fund, 
uh, and our typical state reserve grant money, uh, we use the affordability criteria to calculate a percentage of grant or principal forgiveness you are eligible for. That will still apply to the state revolving fund principal forgiveness that we, that we award in the next couple of rounds, but it does not apply to the American Rescue Plan Act fund. If you're eligible for a certain bucket of funds, you'll be eligible for up to 100% grant or up to the funding caps that I talked about earlier. The next bucket is the state reserve to fund study grants. This is $77.6 million. Um, these funds will be made available in the spring as well. These funds are eligible to all systems, regardless of system size or designation. <laughs> these funds can be used to fund Amer uh, AIA's asset inventory assessment grants, merger regionalization and feasibility grants, uh, pre-construction uh, costs, engineering costs for construction projects. That's a, that is a new eligibility. Um, and, uh, and something that can just be used to get the, the funds to you quicker to do that design and to do some of that, some of those planning activities before the construction project starts. The funds can be used for training and can be used to support rate studies. Uh, these funds are limited to $400,000 per community for the 2021-2023 biennium. Funds will be made available this spring uh, Pre-construction pre planning projects. Uh, so, okay, the AIA and MRF applications, we have an existing priority, rate, priority rating system for them, and that is what we will use. Uh, Pre-construction projects, it's the first time that we're, uh, we're going to consider those as a standalone type of project. Uh, what we're asking communities to do, applicants to do, is to fill out the application um, for the budget um, for the pre-construction work that you want funding to do, um, but the project description will be on the potential future project, and then you'll get prioritization points based on that potential project and the need uh, for the community, what, what the needs of that project are for. Um, so the total prioritization will be based on a combination of the budget for the pre-planning and the potential construction project that will result of those planning efforts. Training and rate studies can be added to uh, construction projects or study grants. Uh, that's what we, we, uh, we recommend and that you do is you just add it to uh, another project, another study grant that you're trying to, trying to accomplish. Uh, and then we'll use those priority rating systems for, for that project on making those awards. Uh, any training uh, would be limited to $2,000 per applicant. Uh, to reimburse mileage, registration costs, uh, and that training must be related to the project. Okay, the, the last and, and another new program, the Local Assistance for Stormwater Infrastructure Investment Fund, and these are funds to support uh, stormwater efforts and potential development of stormwater utilities. $82 million will be available. Um, this particular funding program uh, will not be ready in the spring. Um, well, it's they, these funds uh, will be limited to construction types of projects, up to $15 million, or planning activities, up to $500,000. Um, Nature-based solutions are eligible, um, and creation of a stormwater utility, and efforts to create that utility are eligible uh, for these funds. As I mentioned, we don't have a stormwater program yet, so we don't have a priority rating system that's been developed to rate up, to score applications and to make recommendations for funding. Our plan is to be developing that and to have it final uh, around July of 2022, uh, which would allow us to advertise funds, uh, application process, and have our first round of applications in the fall of 2022, September 30th due date. Uh, if funds re are available after that fall round, uh, they would be made available in future rounds, spring 2023. All right, uh, handing it back over to Shadi. Thank you very much, John, for the um, description of how, to, how we're administering the ARPA funds. Uh, again, we are tracking your questions and we'll try to respond to those questions in other uh, venues. Just wanted to kind of um, round out this presentation by uh, 
you're reminding folks about considerations and, and opportunities uh, that this funding presents, uh, as well as kind of thinking about you know other types of funding that will be made available as well, and how this all ties in together. Uh, because the funds, the ARPA funds need to be expended by December 2026. Uh, need to be aware of that, need to be planning for that. So construction projects that can start soon and that can be completed within three to four years are probably going to be better, uh, uh, better types of projects to um, include in your applications than ones that might take much longer. Or you can think about breaking up a project into multiple phases. If you can complete a phase within three to four years, uh, that would be a good, um, a good project for, for funding. Uh, if you're using ask, if you're using ARPA funding, grant funding essentially to pay for assets, uh, we don't want to get into the same cycle of uh, grant funding paying for infrastructure and then 10, 20, 30 years down the line, the infrastructure deteriorates and there's no funding available to replace those assets. So uh, if you are using grant funding for, for assets, uh, be thinking about or consider how your utility will pay for its replacement in the long term. So think about the life cycle costs. Uh, typically, life cycle costs are much higher than the initial purchase price um, of, of infrastructure. Uh, and also consider, are you addressing the needs of disadvantaged communities? So there are a lot of different types of projects that you can be doing. This is really a high priority um, for our state and for the, the, the nation in general to be um, thinking about disadvantaged communities and making sure that funds are uh, addressing their needs as well. Uh, and what can the funding, um, what can be funded using other means? So if you are able to access loans or other funding sources to pay for some projects, um, that's one of those things that I think the, the applicants need to consider is uh, what are you applying for and what can you pay for some, in some other ways um, as well. There are a lot of opportunities. This funding is significant. So be thinking about transformational projects, things that will be helpful not just the next couple of years, but think about what will be helpful 20, 30 years down the line. Uh, there's a lot of grant funding that can really uh, make a difference for utilities. Uh, for instance, a lot of regionalization type projects, whether they be interconnections with other systems or uh, setting up systems to, to do shared management or shared operations or partnerships or even P, uh, PPPs um, or mergers with other utilities. So regionalization type projects are uh, an, an idea, an example, uh, focusing on disadvantaged communities, addressing environmental justice and equity. Uh, look at resilience uh, and making the infrastructure, um, make sure the infrastructure is resilient to um, uh, changes in, in the environment. Uh, cybersecurity is a growing need for large utilities and funding is available uh, for that. Uh, addressing water and energy efficiency or water loss. Um, looking at uh, stream restoration, stormwater and environmental protection, of course, there's going to be more of that uh, in the fall rounds once we have a rating system established. Uh, there's a lot of funding, as you heard from John, there's a lot of funding specifically for study uh, grants. Uh, so implementing asset management plans or creating capital improvement plans if the system doesn't have one, uh, or to prepare for, pro you know, to do some project planning. So the pre-construction planning is a standalone application. You can just apply just for the pre-construction planning uh, so that you can prepare yourself for construction that you might not think that you'll be able to complete three to four years from now, uh, but you can at least do the project planning now with ARPA funding and get yourself ready for that project um, a couple of years from now. Um, essential system upgrades, right-sizing infrastructure, rehab uh, re um, replacement of infrastructure, those are all um, typical types of infrastructure projects as well. Um, so these are just all examples. Of course, there's a lot of other types of projects out there, uh, but we wanted to kind of remind folks to be thinking uh, long-term and big picture. And there's more opportunities coming down the line. So we're just talking about the American Rescue Plan Act uh, grant funding here, uh, but don't forget we've also got the bipartisan infrastructure law. So that's the um, the law that uh, that passed in uh, Congress uh, in November, uh, and that's going to provide significant increases to the state to, uh, state revolving funds, uh, as well as significant increases to the additional subsidies. Additional subsidies include principal forgiveness, which as a as a utility looks like a grant. Um, so there's going to be a lot of those funds down the line, and unlike ARPA, they don't have a 2026 expiration date. So you could be using, you could be planning for a lot of these projects and using ARPA funds to prepare for projects, and if you think that the projects are going to need longer time frames to complete, there's going to be uh, the funds that come in through the state revolving funds to help with that as well. Uh, and there's also dedicated funding for uh, lead service line inventories, replacement, 
and PFAS and emerging contaminants remediation. So those type of projects, that funding will become available uh, soon. It's not available in the spring 2022 funding rounds, but we'll be communicating plans for these funds uh, as plans are, are being made and the funds become available for us. The spring 22 application materials are being posted um, and we, uh, we should have all the spring 2022 application forms uh, ready on our website by early next week. We've actually posted quite a few of them um, this week. Uh, so if you go on our website, you'll find the application form for spring 2022, uh, as well as most of the supplemental forms right now. Um, and we'll, we're, we're noting which ones are still being updated. So once you go on the website, you should know which ones are ready and which ones uh, we'll be posting next week. Uh, please make sure that you're using the spring 22 documents when applying. Don't be using application materials and guidance materials that you might have used in previous rounds because we've updated all of those materials um, for this funding round to accommodate some of the, the, new, um, the new programs and new opportunities that we have here. And again, as you heard, the applications are due May 2nd. Um, I won't go through each one of these, but just know that on our website, we have application materials Start with the application for funding form, and it specifies additional uh, supplemental forms that you need to complete as part of the application, uh, depending on what you're applying for. Um, so start with the application for funding, and then you'll find these other documents uh, also on our website in the same, uh, same location. Um, so as a summary, what's available for the spring 2022 round? We've got funding for drinking water and wastewater infrastructure construction projects. ARPA funding, which includes ARPA funding through the Viable Food Reserve and State Reserve programs. We also have the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund and the Clean Water State Revolving Fund available for the spring. So we'll be looking at, you're only going to apply once, and we will be using your application and try to provide uh, the best available funding, as you heard from John, um, to your project. And we have not just ARPA grants, but we also have the Drinking Water SRF and the Clean Water SRF funds uh, in the spring round. Um, and we're also funding AIAs and MRFs, as well as the pre-construction planning grants without the construction component uh, as a new option as well. CDBGI and uh, stormwater grants are not available for, the, for this spring round, but will be available in the fall. We've got application training. So if you, those of you who are interested in applying, we highly recommend that you attend a training to know the process, especially if you're new to the application training process, um, please come to one of the, these trainings. We've got five different trainings uh, from February 21st through March 3rd across the state. Uh, the February 28th option is a hybrid model, so we'll, you'll be able to register. If you can't attend these in person or if we run out of space, because space is limited in, in these locations, um, we have that hybrid model available so folks can attend and listen to the February 28th um, uh, training. Uh, we're also recording that training and posting it online so that anybody who can't attend or even um, listen in on the 28th will have an opportunity to watch that recorded training uh, down the line as well. Uh, highly recommend looking at the training before you uh, submit an application. And then we have additional resources for potential applicants. So as I mentioned, the ARPA administration plan is on our website, and that's uh, it summarizes or details all the information that John had shared. Um, so in case you need to read through it uh, a little bit more, it's on our website, as well as the application instructions and guidance uh, that go with the application form. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions about procurement and how we're going to be handling uh, uni uniform guidance, how we comply with uniform guidance uh, that applies to ARPA funds. Uh, we are working right now on a uh, procurement policy, which we will have ready before the first day of application training, which is February 21st. So we should be posting our procurement policy uh, by uh, February 21st uh, and potentially even sooner, as soon as we co complete that policy. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. We'll be addressing all of those questions uh, that we're getting about procurement in, in that policy, as well as a policy on design build um, type of activities. The FAQ on ARPA um, SR, um, funding is going to be made available on our website. Um, we'll be posting that, I think, um, also by the application deadline, so we have time to get your questions and uh, try to work through those questions and provide some answers 
So be looking for the FAQ document on our website uh, by the 21st. And we'll have additional outreach uh, events to communicate the plans. The recording of this webinar will be posted, as well as other Q&A sessions that we'll do with research agent partners, which I want to make sure that we have time for. Um, so I'm going to end my um, point right here with the, the main thing is, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, and send, send your questions to our staff members who can address your questions, or please attend the Q&A sessions that we'll be doing with um, resource agency partners. And with that, I'd like to invite, um, let's start with Marquis Cruz. If uh, Marquis, if you'd like to unmute and uh, share a few words from the NC uh, Pandemic Recovery Office. Sure, sure. Hope everybody can hear me. Uh, my name is Marquise Cruz. I'm a program analyst at the North Carolina Pandemic Recovery Office, and I'll be working with DEQ, uh, DIT, and Department of Commerce with their state fiscal recovery funds. Uh, as most of you know, NC Pro was created last year by the state to help coordinate the inflow of federal funds into the state. Uh, also, as Shadi mentioned, the state allocations and the local allocations are separate pots of money. Uh, but they still fall under the same program and same rules under the American Recovery, uh, American Rescue Plan Act as the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund. Uh, that total program uh, for North Carolina, we received $8.8 .8 billion. The state received $5.4 billion. Counties received $2 billion. Entitlement communities received $668 million. And non-entitlement communities received $707 million. Uh, the funding received in was delivered in two tranches. The first half was received in summer 2021, and the second half is coming in summer 2022. Uh, the communities that received our local funds have the ability to make the decisions of how they want to spend the money, and then the state's part of the funds was determined by the General Assembly in their budget. Uh, but they both fall under the same guidance under the U.S. Treasury's final rule. Uh, then water and sewer eligibilities are tied to the clean water and drinking water SRF programs eligibilities. Uh, moving forward, we're proudly working over at NC Pro with our other uh, stakeholder, stakeholders across the state to provide assistance to share information. Fortunately, the General Assembly has provided funding to some of those stakeholders to help provide technical assistance to communities as they implement the projects that they've chosen as the highest priority for their communities. Uh, thank you, and I'll pass off to the next person. Thank you so much, Marquis. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, I'd like to invite either um, Sarah Collins or Chris Nida from the League of Municipalities if you'd like to share a few words. Thank you, Shadi. I'm Chris Nida from the North Carolina League of Municipalities. As you mentioned, my colleague Sarah Collins is with uh, me here as well. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the, the partnership that the League has with DEQ and with Marquise and all his colleagues at NC Pro as well. Um, the American Rescue Plan, as you all have said, represents a, a tremendous opportunity for all of our members to invest in infrastructure. We at the League have uh, produced a report late last year highlighting some of those opportunities and really encouraging and recommending that our members look at investment in utilities and infrastructure as a way to, to spend these American Rescue Plan funds. I think we may be able to put a link to that in the chat. We have additional American Rescue Plan uh, resources available on a, an ARP specific site that we have as well. And as Marquise mentioned, you know, we're grateful to the General Assembly that they um, chose to appropriate funds to the League of Municipalities, along with our partners at the County Commissioners Association and the Councils of Government around the state, to provide technical assistance on American Rescue Plan funds. So we are still working to um, uh, sign all our agreements with the state and get access to those funds, but we hope to be able to ramp up our technical assistance capacity, bring on additional personnel, and have resources available for you all in the field. So. Um, cities, especially, uh, please, you know, reach out to us. Let us know how we can help. We want to be able to provide resources to assist with the administration of ARP funds to reduce your administrative burden and help facilitate these conversations about infrastructure and what is the, the most transformational way to invest these funds, whether that's uh, in your utility, whether it's looking at regional solutions. You know, there are opportunities to pool your local ARP allocations with state loans. So really finding out what the best way to leverage all of these opportunities are uh, to, to allow you to invest the funds in the ways that are most impactful in your community.
So um, that's all. Please uh, um, welcome uh, any outreach to us. We want to be able there to assist all of our municipalities. Sarah, did I miss anything or would you like to add anything? Nope, just that I put that infrastructure report case study in the chat as well as our larger ARP site and then Chris and I's contact information. We'd love to hear from you all. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, Shadi and DEQ and everybody for the opportunity and for, for your continued partnership. We appreciate all your work. Thank you so much. We appreciate the partnership with the League of Municipalities as well. And thank you for, for joining and uh, participating um, as well as to the Pandemic Recovery Office. I don't see somebody from the UNC School of Government on right now to add some more words. I will just say that I think that um, there's uh, discussions about creating a Q&A session uh, as one of the, if you're familiar with uh, Kara Malanti's office hours, uh, one of those office hours will be dedicated for water and wastewater infrastructure Kara's funding. Uh, so we will be. Um, Kara's here. Kara's here. Oh, Kara's on? Yes. Uh, Kara, if you'd like to unmute and um, participate. Sorry, I didn't see you on there. All right, we might be having some. Hang on just a second. I think we're trying to promote you into being attendee, but as, um, as I was saying, I think we're, we're preparing to do a Q&A session with the School of Government as well. We can answer your questions. Hold on, um, Getting there. There she is. All, all right. right, and we, She's I think. now a panelist. Carrie, you're now a panelist if you'd like to unmute yourself and add a few more words. Sorry about that. No worries at all, and I, I know everyone's anxious to go, so I'll just say that we do continue at the school to have the weekly office hours focused mainly on uh, all the rules and compliance requirements for your local funds. But we are so grateful to be working closely with the, the state partners and Shadi and others have agreed to come and make a cameo appearance at our office hours on February 21st at 8.30 a.m. Um, for a Q&A on both the local and the state uh, uh, plots of money here. And so that, that, that's a, that'll be an opportunity to ans ask questions about both, uh, expending both of those types of funds. So thank you, Shadi, for, for having us here. Thank you, Kara. So uh, yeah, we're, we're absolutely happy to participate on the 21st webinar um, to do Q&A. So you'll all have a chance to, to digest this information that you heard from, from John and you have from the ARP administration plan. We appreciate your um, attendance. We appreciate your questions. Thank you for sitting in. I apologize for earlier technical difficulties that kind of uh, put us a little behind uh, schedule. But thank you all for participating and we're excited to be working with you. Please feel free to submit questions to us later on. Um, otherwise, we are um, excited to be working with you. Thank you all.